Hi, and welcome to Fun with Stats. I had this similar question in an interview, and I wasn't very successful at solving it, so I wanted to review it in case anyone ever gets something similar, and hopefully that will be useful. Uh, so here we'll be looking at the bivariate normal distribution and determining the conditional expectation. So suppose we have two normally distributed random variables, you know, this is the normal distribution, and we will use them to generate a bivariate normal distribution. So suppose we have two normal variables, z1 and z2, uh, they're independent to each other, but we're interested in generating two correlated normal random variables uh, with parameters. These are just some numbers, so the parameters are mean of x, um, uy, sigma x, sigma y, and rho. So let's start with uh, generating x, and we're using the z1 and z2 to generate the correlated normal random variables. So we can choose some number, mu x, and some number, sigma x, and that's how we construct our normally distributed variable x from the variable z1. And now let's use both z1 and z2 to construct y, so that uh, x and y will be correlated. So again, um, mu y, sigma y, and rho are just some numbers, and z1 and z2 here are our normal independent random variables, but because x was generated by using z1 and um, y was generated by using z1 and z2, and if uh, rho is not zero, then x and y will be correlated. So let's check uh, the marginal distributions of x and y. So x is just mu x plus sigma x times z1, where z1 is normally distributed with mean 0 and sigma squared equal to 1. So mu x is just a constant, sigma x is just a constant, as z1 uh, follows the normal distribution. So from here we can determine that x follows uh, also a normal distribution, because we just applied the linear transformation to z1. So x is normally distributed with mean mu x and variance sigma uh, squared x. And now let's look at y. So this is how we can construct it, y. Again, uy, sigma y, rho are just some numbers that we chose, and z1 and z2 are normally distributed with a mean 0, variance of 1, and they're independent. So here, this is how we could write it out, that uh, we're having here a summation of two normally distributed independent random variables. And therefore, uh, when we add it up, we obtain a summation of these two variables. One is normally distributed with mean 0 and variance rho squared, and the other is with mean 0 and variance 1 minus rho squared. So from that we can determine that y also follows a normal distribution uh, with mean mu y and variance um, sigma y squared. So therefore both x and y are also normally distributed, just as z1 and z2, but we had z1 was independent to z2, uh, but this is no longer the case for x and y, uh, depending on the value of rho. So let's check uh, what is the covariance between x and y, because as I said in the beginning, we were interested in generating uh, correlated normal random variables. So we know this is the formula for covariance, it's the expectation of x minus mu x uh, times y minus mu y. So uh, we could write this out, remember that x equal uh, mu x plus sigma x times z1, and we're subtracting here uh, sigma x, so these will cancel out. And uh, this was our formula for y, and here we're subtracting expected value of y, so mu y, um, so these will cancel out. And therefore, this is our simplified expression, we we'll cancel out the means. Sigma x and sigma y are just constants, so we can take that outside the brackets, can put that in the front, because they're just some numbers, and here this is what we're left uh, in the brackets with, rho times z1 squared, because here we're multiplying uh, z1 by z1, so we get z1 squared, uh, plus square root of 1 minus rho squared, and then we're multiplying z1 by z2, so here we have z1 times z2, um, and that equals well, this is outside the bracket, sigma x times sigma y times expectation of rho times z1 squared uh, plus expectation square root y minus rho squared z1 z2. 
And again, we can take out the constants outside of the expectation. Sigma x times sigma y times uh, rho expectation of z1 squared plus 1 minus rho squared square root expectation of z1 times z2. Uh, but z1 and z2 are independent um, with mean 0 and therefore uh, we actually have expectation of z1 times z2 is equal to 0. Uh, therefore uh, we end up with this. This is just sigma x times sigma y times rho times expectation of z1 squared. Well, expectation of z1 squared is just the variance of z1 because the mean is 0, so this is times 1 and therefore the covariance of x, y equals sigma x times sigma y times rho. So as you can see, if the standard deviations of x and y are not zero, well, which is what we're assuming because these are random variables, they're not constants, then if rho is not zero, uh, x and y are correlated. So this is how we generated uh, two correlated normal random variables. So this is uh, just an example. We have a uh, row equals 0 0.7. And this is our bivariate normal density. So I mean, you could see it as this is our axis for the density. And this is, for example, our x values. And uh, these are our y values. And this is, this is the bivariate normal density function. So yeah, it's a 3D because we have now two variables, X and Y, and we have the density axis. So the shape of this, it depends on the row value. Uh, you could look it up. I mean, this still looks similar to when row is zero, but it's actually a bit of a different shape and uh, it will change depending on the value of row. So I, as I said previously, we're interested, this is what uh, I was asked at the interview, we're interested in the conditional expectation of a bivariate normal. So again, remember we generated x and y from two normal random variables, uh, z1 and z2 are independent, and we generated x and y. x and y are also normally distributed, but they're no longer necessarily independent, their covariance depends on the value of rho. And so now since if they're not independent, then given a value of x, we would uh, expect that the expectation of y now would depend on the value of x. Well, because expectation of z1 given z2 just equals expectation of z1 um, equals 0, because z1 and z2 are independent, but uh, x and y are not, so now how do we calculate this? So we can approach it this way, since x equals mu x plus sigma x times z1, let's uh, compute z for some certain value of x. So if x, well x is a random variable, and this is the value for it. So suppose the random variable x takes on the value of uh, small x, then z1's realization equals 2x minus mu x divided by sigma x. So then expectation of y, given that x equals uh, to some number, small x, well, um, it's the expectation of this, because remember, this is our y, this is how we constructed y, so it's expectation of this expression uh, conditional on the fact that x equals to some value. And now we want to get rid of the x, and I mean, we want to get rid of z1, so we sub in the expression that we calculated for z1 into here. So now we need to find the expectation of this expression conditional on the random variable x taking on this value. So this just equals um, to that. I mean, this is a constant. This whole expression is a constant because small x is just some value. Uh, therefore, I mean, we know what this already equals to. We don't need to take expectation of that. Uh, this is a constant, it could go outside of the expectation function. So that's why we can just take this all outside. And so we just now need the expectation of z2, given that x is equal to x. But we know that x equals mu x plus sigma x z1. Uh, so x in no way 
I mean, Z2 in no way depends on X. Uh, therefore, expectation of Z2 conditional on X just equals to expectation of Z2, which is equal to zero. Well, because Z2 is a normally distributed with mean zero. Uh, therefore, this simplifies to this expression. So that's how we determine that the expectation of Y conditional that X equals X is equal to mu y plus sigma y times rho uh, times x minus mu x divided by sigma x. Uh, yeah, so therefore, this is how we found the conditional expectation of y. And by symmetry, uh, now we can say that the conditional expectation of x, given that y equals to y, which is a value, it equals to mu x plus sigma x times rho times this expression in the brackets uh, y minus mu y divided by sigma y. So here we found the conditional expectation for a y and x. So you can see here, this is just a demonstration. I mean, this could be our x and this could be our y. So suppose x equals small x here, then this is the distribution of y and this is the mean, so this is our expectation of y given x equals x. So we can see that the expectation of y conditional on x, so I mean the y conditional on x follows a normal distribution with some mean, and this mean depends on the value of x uh, because x and y are correlated. So see, because if you write it out, expectation of y given x equal to x is represented in the form of ax plus b. Well, we know that's just a linear relationship. So therefore, this is we have our linear relationship. And these are the distributions of y for each uh, value of x. So therefore, you can see how the expected value of y changes given the value of x. Like here, we have a one, val one expected value for y, but for x2, we have a larger expected value of y. So that's what happens when the normal variables are correlated. Ah, uh, well, hopefully this helps. And if you get this kind of question, now you know what to do. Thanks. Bye.